How's it going folks, Jeremy Adrian here, welcome back to the channel for the weekend MMO news drop. Let's get straight to it, beginning with the Elder Scrolls Online, who this past week has turned on a new community-wide event called Dragon Rise. Running until October 14th, Dragon Rise will reward all ESO players who participate with gifts when each of the three tiers are hit. And at time of recording, the overall event is at 69%, which means we already unlocked two rewards out of three. Important to note, however, that the event and its rewards are only available to those who own the Elsewhere chapter. It's very similar to last year's Summerfall event, where everyone who owned the Somerset chapter ended up getting a sweet mansion. And this time around, the rewards are tamer, but hey, what can you do? In Tier 1, the reward is a Green Dragon Impact, while Tier 2 offers the Grim Harvester costume. At Tier 3 is a housing item called Dragon's Treasure Trove, which when placed in your house can offer you lootable bags that contain random items, collectibles, and riches. Progressing the event involves completing the Northern Elsewhere Pathfinder achievement and slaying dragons. Now there's two additional game-wide buffs we can unlock. One is for XP in Northern Elsewhere after a certain amount of dragons are slain, and the second is for a gold acquisition buff, but this one requires players to complete the Dragon Hole DLT prologue quest in droves. Which brings us nicely to the second news bit for ESO, the Dragon Hole DLC prologue, and it will arrive on October the 8th. This is already on the PDS, I'm told, and if everything goes smoothly, we should see the DLC itself release in late October or early next month. And a last bit of PSA for everyone who hasn't gotten the Elsewhere chapter yet and want to take part in this year's Dragon Rise event, it's currently on sale at 50% off, so knock yourselves out. Let's move on to Guild Wars 2, which has a couple of news bits for us. Firstly, ArenaNet has shared a preview on the official website about the upcoming build templates, which will arrive in-game on October 29th. We know from the information shared that this new feature will give us two separate types of templates, which are build templates containing your utility skills, specs, and traits, and the second is for equipment. And each template tab will have its own keybind, which is great for swapping quickly on the move out of combat. Tablets can be found in the hero panel within the build tab. And the important thing to note here is that each character will get three build tablet tabs for free and additional ones can be purchased from the gem store. Templates can also be shared via chat link in game, which will be handy, but PVP and world versus world templates are not there yet, so they will be arriving sometime in the future. Secondly, for Guild Wars 2, the October 1st patch has been deployed, and besides the usual world polish stuff, there's plenty of tweaks to professions, so if you've missed it, I highly suggest going through them. Links down below. And finally, for Guild Wars 2, Mike O'Brien has posted his farewell message to the community this week as well and he's leaving ArenaNet to form a new studio and I believe it's called Mana Works in case some of you want to stalk him and other former ArenaNet staff on their next project although their website is down at the moment. Some media sites are reporting that Mike was working on a new Guild Wars game and I guess we'll never know. Over in Azeroth, while we deal with the aftermath of the latest war campaign and wait for retail's 15th anniversary events and raid, we have news about WoW Classic, and it's for Phase 2. In a recent interview with PC Gamer Magazine, Eon Hazi Costas has shared that Phase 2 will indeed be coming to Classic by end of 2019 before 2020. If you need a refresher, Phase 2 for Classic includes content like World Bosses, Azugiris and Lord Kazakh, the Dire Mall Dungeon, and the PvP Honor System. The interview also touched on the layering system which exists for Classic, and how it will be scaled back for Phase 2, not just as players come and go, but to ensure no exploits will take place particularly for World Boss kills. Link to the interview can be found down below. Final Fantasy XIV is also in the news this week because Square Enix has confirmed that more housing districts and residential subdivisions will be coming to the game. After the release of Patch 5.1, there will be a total of 180 new plots of land for each of the four housing districts in-game. An apartment building will also be added to each ward, with a second building available in each subdivision. If you've always wanted to own a house in Final Fantasy XIV but never got a chance to do so, then Patch 5.1's release will be your golden key. Now do note however that there are the usual restrictions in place and you can learn more about those on the Lodestone site, 
plus sales of plots in wards 19 through 21 will be restricted to free companies aka guilds only for a limited time. Besides that, October 18th will be the date of the next letter from the producer live and this time around we'll get a proper sneak peek at the Yorha Dark Apocalypse raid and the Ishgard restoration so mark your calendars. Let's talk about some Arc Age Unchained right now since its release is just around the corner and firstly, hey, if you didn't know, PDS is up right now. If you own a Founders Pack and can't wait to check out the changes, you can now access the PDS server and take a look around but do expect tons of issues from crashes to accessibility which from experience can be a pain in the butt. For everyone else without a pack, PDS will be open to you on Monday, October 7th. Per this weekend's Gamigo live stream, there's going to be some changes to things, especially with the marketplace items and the amount of XP it takes to level up your Arc Pass, among other things. Unfortunately, if you were hoping to get your character and name reservations done early, there's bad news. Name reservations have been delayed to October 12th for both EU and NA, but Unchained's release date has not changed, so it's still going live on the 15th. That's a three-day grace period to get your name sorted out, which isn't ideal, so let's hope it's a smooth journey from here on out to launch. Astelia is up next and we're coming up in two weeks since the game's official launch, which means it's time to introduce the missing features, and Baronson and ENA are going to do exactly that. Arriving next Tuesday, October 8th, will be a large patch which brings the class evolution system. All of Astelia's core classes will now get their subclasses. For example, warriors can now advance into Crusader, Berserker, or Gladiator, and each will have its own class buffs and additional trigger effects on legendary weapons. That's not all though, as the patch will also begin the first stage of the legendary dungeon system, the highest tier of difficulty dungeons for end game players. Now I'm not exactly sure what that entails or what CP score players need to be at, but just know that it's coming. There's still no news on the Avalon RVR mode, which is killing me, and I have decided to delay my review of Estelle until next weekend just to incorporate the new features coming next week so hang tight. Okay let's move on to Ashes of Creation who at the start of the week announced an October giveaway that involves playing the Apocalypse Battle Royale in order to grab cosmetic rewards for the upcoming MMORPG. So if you have an Intrapid account you'll need to achieve level 50 in Ashes of Creation Apocalypse by Thursday October 30th to be eligible to receive the Armor of the Autumn Night cosmetic skin shown on the screen right now. The skin itself can be used in both Apocalypse and the upcoming MMORPG when it launches, and if you're already level 50 before this event started, you will have it added to your account. It appears that these are the type of cosmetic rush events we can expect from Entrapid to get more players playing Apocalypse in order to unlock cosmetics for the MMORPG. Now what's unclear is that whether or not these are exclusive forever, which means if you don't do it now, you'll never get it in the future. If so, I'd imagine not a lot of backers who don't fancy the Battle Royale will be happy about this. If that speaks to you, share your thoughts. If you're looking for a PvP-centric MMORPG to play and don't mind dated graphics from a game that launched 18 years ago, hang tight because Dark Age of Camelot will be releasing its free-to-play model for selected accounts dropping later this month. Titled Endless Conquest, the free-to-play mode allows eligible accounts to access all three realms and fully participate in RVR PvP up to the max character level and realm rank. However, there are restrictions for not being on the subscription, like no housing, champion level abilities, and you can only select 9 of the 21 races available. How does one know if they are eligible for free to play? Well, if you're new to the game and have never made an account before, you're in. If you're a former subscriber on the other hand, your account needs to be inactive for about 180 days to get in for free. The link to the FAQ will be in the comments below. If you've never heard of Dark Age of Camelot before, Plenty of modern MMOs that have tried faction PvP RVR modes are in some ways inspired by this classic game, so why not jump in to find out what it's like since it's going free? Now here's something interesting, the lead designer of Ultima Online, Raf Koster, has spoken to PC Gamer this week and has revealed that he is working on a brand new project. Alongside veterans from Disney, Marvel, and Sony Online Entertainment, his new studio, Playable Worlds, has raised $2.7 million from investors and they plan to develop a brand new sandbox MMO that combines crafting, building, and exploring. The game wants to appeal to a broad range of players where folks can come together and find ways to play regardless if it's PvE or PvP in this sandbox. And besides that, not a whole lot was shared. 
If you are an MMO veteran and have played Ultima Online in the past, this could be a studio and project worth keeping an eye on as time has changed, technology has changed, and it'll be interesting to see where this project leads to. So let's just hope it doesn't end up on Kickstarter. In the strategy MMO section, medieval action game Conqueror's Blade has just launched its inaugural Season 1 content update titled Seize the Crown. For a limited time and for the duration of the season, players can complete weekly challenges, in-game, level up their battle pass progression, and claim all the tier rewards available, which includes a new season-exclusive cosmetics, currency, and chests. Now, some of the battle pass tier rewards are free for all, or you can optionally purchase the entirety of the pass for 10 bucks to get more rewards and more out of the season. And last but not least, Destiny 2 has just released the latest raid, Garden of Salvation, for the Shadowkeep expansion, which launched earlier in the week. The raid takes players back to the Black Garden and introduces all new loot, so if you meet the power level requirements, go have fun, or you can watch the world first race for it. I've been playing a ton of Destiny 2 this week, and I'm having so much fun, so if you're new to the game like me, feel free to share your thoughts about it down in the comments. And that's it for me this weekend, folks. Hope you're all doing great. If there's news for a game that you play which isn't covered here this week, as always, do share it with us in the comments down below and let's keep each other informed. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss a video. Once again, I'm Jeremy Adrian, and I thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Saved. <laughs>